Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel where today we are going to be covering the Mark 1 Octa track. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we have the Electron Octa track. Uh, now for the purposes of this video, the screen right here is going to be recorded on another camera because I can't adjust the contrast on this unless I open it up, and I don't want to be opening it up. Um, so anyways, um, we've got a main out, which is a stereo left and right. We've got a Q out, which is a stereo left and right. We've got an input A and B, an input C and D, where you can send audio into the machine. Basically, if you want to sample something into this, this has what's called recording buffers. Um, so you can just record into this and have it on your little step sequencer here. Um, so we've got eight different tracks. So you got track one, track two, track three, track four, track five, track six, track seven, track eight. And then you've also got eight MIDI tracks as well when you click the MIDI button here. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to share how I use this machine. It's basically my drum synth, so to say. Um, and it also routes my, my MIDI because I found kind of a way that works best with my, my hybrid setup where I send MIDI to this machine that goes back into Ableton and it gives me like a nice low latency and I can store all my little patterns and everything. It just, it just works well for me. It's kind of like more of like a live, live setup that just, uh, it really works for me. Uh, it keeps me keeps me from looking at the DAW, so to say, and I can just kind of focus on a machine that I know very well, which is this machine. So anyways, um, continuing along, you've got a function button, a cue button, there's a pattern button, a bank button. So you can store 16 patterns per bank. So right now we're on bank one, pattern one. So you can have 16 banks, each bank can have 16 patterns. So you can write, you could write a whole live set on this. Um, if you look in a couple of my, actually, one of the first videos I uploaded on YouTube was basically a live set all programmed on this thing right here. And that was like an hour long live set. So moving along, you get an enter, a yes, or an a enter yes, exit no, You've got like a little navigation button here. You've got your record, play, and pause. And then you've also got basically your like menus. So you can adjust like the pitch, the start, the length, the rate, the re-trigger, something or rather. I really don't use that, so I'm not going to explain it. Uh, next, you've got your amp amplitude section. So you can set the attack, the hold, the release, the volume, and the balance. And then you get into an LFO where you can adjust the speeds and the depths and then you get into effect one and effect two so every track has two effects uh, now when you double press these buttons you can also get into more more menu diving -y kind of stuff this this uh, sampler there is a ton of menu diving um, it takes a very long time to learn this machine um, so when you're going along you can get like different ways to trigger things. It's basically sub menus on the menus. Uh, now the, the LFO section, this is where you can get into adjusting like all the different, basically where you want to send your LFO, you get wave types, you get um, how, how fast the LFO goes and the trigger, do you want this to trigger like be freely or do you want it to be on like one trigger, sync triggers? Um, and then you also get the speed and the depth. And then when you get into the effects, this is where you can select your effects. Um, so on effect layer one, you can choose from a filter, an equalizer, a DJ equalizer, a phaser, flanger, chorus, spatializer, comb filter, compressor, lo-fi. And then when you get into effect two, you get the addition of a delay, a plate reverb, spring reverb, and a dark reverb. Now, the effects I mainly use on this, I always try and have essentially like a filter on here because it's got it's got a decent distortion. And I find it's nice to just add distortion to the samples to give them a little bit of a analog edge, so to say. 
Um, and then when you go to effects to the delay, it's a very well planned out delay. Um, you can do a lot with the delay. Uh, the reverbs, yeah, they are okay. The plate reverb is just like, they sound very digital. They're not the greatest reverbs. The spring reverb sounds exactly what it is, which is a spring reverb. Um, the dark reverb is very, it can be very muddy, so to say. So um, when you get over into here, you've got your little little cross crossbar. And what this does is, is you can essentially have 16 different scenes. And a scene is basically you could alter a ton of different parameters on this and lock it to this scene button here. And then say you want to have this on a different scene or parameter lock, you can set a whole bunch of different parameter locks on this button here. So when you slide this crossbar, all of a sudden your parameter effects will slowly fade over to this. Um, I will explain that in this video. It's kind of kind of complex. Um, and then you get up into these buttons here. So you got these six six buttons or six encoders, I should say. And basically these just control what's happening on that main screen there. You can press and hold to make things move quickly, or you can go slowly just by not pressing and turning them. Uh, now in the red, uh, that's where your function button comes in, and it's basically you get second, the second parameters per button, so to say. Um, yes, this is this is a very very difficult one to cover. So, anyways, we're gonna load in a sample. So. When you're on a track and you double click this, you get an option of a static machine, a flex machine, a through machine, a neighbor machine, and a pickup machine. So the static machine basically uses the onboard memory to load the samples in. Um, the flex machine uses more of like the card memory, so to say. Uh, I hope I'm explaining that right. I think that's correct. Don't quote me on that. I always just leave this on flex. Um, just because it allows me to have, in a sense, more memory available to load samples. And it's just what I use it for. Uh, the through machine, basically when you have your inputs coming into the machine, you can set this as like input A and B on this track so that everything coming through this will go through the machine and then you can use like the LFOs and the effects. Uh, the neighbor machine will pick up the audio from the neighboring track. So say I was on track two and wanted to take the audio from track one, that's where I would use a neighbor machine. And then the pickup machine, I can't remember. Like I said, I'm gonna show, <laughs> show this machine for how I use it. There are a lot of be better Electron users out there than me. I like to use this kind of very simple as like a sequencer drum machine. And that's what this, this video is going to be about. So once we select our machine, uh, we can slide over to the next page where I can assign this number one to what kind of sample I want to use. So I have all these different sample packs loaded on here. And I just like to go through and pick, pick, pick dif dif different sounding samples to load in here where I can mangle and kind of tweak them. So we're going to start off with a kick. Let's just go with this kick, very simple kick. Uh, so when I exit out of this, right now you can see the machine is moving along. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this just a one bar, one bar little pattern for demonstration purposes. So you get 16 steps. So this is, I'm just gonna do a simple four to the floor kick drum. So, very, very Daft Punk sounding kind of kick drum there. And then what I'm going to go to is the next track, which is track two. And I'm going to pick out like a snare drum. That might be a cool one. Now I think I already have some sort of like filter on this. So I'm going to write in the snare drum. Very simple little pattern, and then I'm gonna go to my 
number three here and pick out like a hi-hat of some kind. That might be cool. Yeah, that's kind of okay. So let's go into, I'm just gonna mute these. So we'll just have a kick drum for now. So let's go over like a filter, for example. So what I like to use is the distortion. can get quite distorted. It's kind of like a clipper almost tube-like kind of distortion. So I like to add just a bit of distortion and then basically you've got a um, high pass and a low pass. You can set the Q as well so you can get some a little bit of resonance there. It's a pretty decent filter section. I quite I quite enjoy it. I think it's quite good. Now, for a kick drum, say we want to add some weird, like, I don't know. Let's try the lo-fi, just for an example purpose. So the lo-fi is kind of like a bit crusher, kind of weird distortion machine. Just like that, you can get a very, very weird kind of like electronic sound. Let's go with something like that, a nice little kind of like bit crushing effect to it. Now, say for example, like I was talking about on this slide bar, I want to have like a filter. So let's open up the filter on this and I'm going to set this. When I click this button and click this button, that's gonna be our base for A. So when I go to our scene B, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to turn up the filter. I'm kind of covering that with the camera, sorry about that. Uh, it's a very difficult video to film with two cameras. So I'm turning up the low pass, or sorry, the high pass on this. So now when I slide the little crossbar, we lose some of the low end very simple like little DJ effect so to say uh, let's do something on the snare let's let's cut off a lot of the low end and then let's add quite a bit of delay to it now let's lock this to to the grid, so to say. Now, say I want to have um, basically the delay mix on our scene. So this is very handy to kind of like, you know, create those kind of like transitional effects. So I like to like kind of write little patterns on this. And then what I do is, is I mute and unmute. So when I hold the function and click on a track, it will mute it. And then I'll use the crossbar where I'll go from different effects. So it's, it's very easy to just kind of like mess around and create more of the human elements in electronic music with this machine. Um, now the LFOs are also really good on this. I'm going to use the hi-hat in this example. So for example, I'm going to send the LFO one to the pitch. Um, So already, this is like 
a very diverse sample, so to say. Now let's go to telephone number two and let's set this to like our balance, for example. So the depth is basically the dry and the wet. You have a speed also. And then you've got this multi, which will multiply the speed. So you can hear that's kind of like panning around all over the place and, you know, very dynamic. That is, that is quite cool. Now say, say on our hi-hat we want to, let's add like a flanger. That's kind of cool. And then let's, let's do a bit of a plate reverb on the, on the, uh, on the uh, on the hi hat here, and what I'm going to do is is I'm going to have this as a send, not a mix. So basically, this will be a sending it to the reverb, so it acts as like a separate channel, and it won't just be like a fully wet reverb on top of the hat. And let's say, for example, let's set the mix a little lower, and then we'll do our scene button, where it's a very wet. Something like that. Yes, that's quite good. Now say we want to add another little, I don't know, weird groovy thing of some kind, uh, like a percussion. Like that. And we'll write in, we'll write that into the pattern I'm using. Now we can also make this a four bar pattern when I hold the function and this scale setup button. Um, so right now it's 16 steps, 16 steps. We're going to turn that to 64. Now, on each step as well, so like for example, at the end of this four bar loop, I want to pitch down this kick drum. When you hold the step, you can twist this and parameter lock per step. Already, this is like a crazy, crazy decent pattern. Um, yes. Um, that kind of covers like basically how I use this thing. Just write down things, noodle around on this, and then basically I'll record maybe a couple of different patterns that I can switch through. Um, so when I hold that pattern button, that gives me the option to switch to all these different patterns. Say I had them loaded, uh, a little green light will appear if I do have a pattern there. Um, yes, I like this machine. So how, how would I rate this thing? Um, now, since this is like the centerpiece of like <clears throat> a lot of my routing in my studio, it has to get bonus points. And this is kind of like very handy to have in a hybrid studio. Uh, like I mentioned with the MIDI channels, um, I send like my MIDI keys and then I will route these through Ableton to all my different synths and everything. And it's very handy to have everything on like essentially the same swing grid and as well as having like the ability to save the patterns. Like I know you can do that in Ableton and everything, but I find like 
when I up the buffer rate in Ableton, obviously you get the latency and everything, and I try and keep this as low a latency kind of setup that I possibly can. And like, say I ever want to go and play out a track live, having these little sequences already pre-programmed in on the card, where it's already saved on like the actual, um, like the actual project is quite handy because then I can just, you know, transfer this over to different projects and everything and kind of create a live set based on a track I have already created. Um, it's just nice to be able to travel with a very small piece of gear and to be able to perform on something that is on like a very decent sized form factor. And you're not having to bring like a computer and play off a computer and play off of a look at a screen and everything. I don't know, this is just, it, it gets bonus points for the, for just being that centerpiece of like being so versatile. Um, now, the sound, the sound is good. Like I said, it's, I, I think the sound is great on this. And the only, I think the only real downfall of this is like the effects are kind of outdated. Um, they're very like early 2000s to 2010, like electro kind of effects. Um, they can be quite diverse. The delay is good. The reverbs are kind of terrible. So I, I, I really do feel that the effects are outdated on this. Um, now as for build quality, um, this one has been solid. I have toured with this machine. It's been really good build quality. The only thing is like the encoders sometimes get a little fishy. Like for example, I'm twisting this up and sometimes it goes down. Um, yes, the encoders is the only downfall of this synth. I know it's a simple cheap fix, but I just use it knowing that it has a little bit of issues with the with some of the encoders and everything. So overall, this is kind of a hard one to score. We gave what was it? We gave the Blofeld a sixteen. Hmm. I would have to give this as like a studio essential if you're if you're really looking to kind of like perform live. I would give this machine probably an 18. This gets an 18 for sure. Big old 144, 18. Um, it is just so robust. You can, it's basically a DAW in a box and you can't go wrong with that. Um, it's nice to like be outside of your computer and just noodling around on this. And the learning curve is steep, yes. But once you figure it out, you can get ideas down way faster than a computer because you just have so many buttons for everything. Um, I, I think it's great for that. So there it is, the Mark I Octatrack. The probably one of the most diverse and robust samplers for, I would say, electronic music that is on the market right now. And these go from anywhere from like... I've seen as low as like 600 bucks to like 1200 bucks on reverb, which is an absolute steal. Like you think about it, you pay, you pay a hefty fee for the price of your DAW. You do get absolutely everything, including samples. This, you have to like obviously load your own samples and everything, but just having the form factor to work very quickly on a machine that is quite laid out, that kind of does have a lot of menu diving. I think this thing is a must have if you are big into like the hybrid studio, like if your studio needs like a centerpiece that is like a central control unit, this this would be my suggestion as a go-to. So would I suggest this? 100%, go out there and buy a Mark I Octatrack, 100% uh, worth your money. I use this on absolutely everything. It's like the Frank's red hot sauce for me for writing drums and doing like weird things with samples and obviously doing all my MIDI routing and playing live on it as well. So yes, go out and buy one and enjoy it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Octatrack. Obviously, there are other samplers out there. Let me know if you use another kind of sampler and what kind of sampler you're using. Let me know down in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as that helps me immensely. And please also subscribe to my channel as we are 
very, very close now to 100 subscribers. And I'm very thankful for all of you for subscribing to my channel and watching my my subpar content on on different gear and the studio build and everything. It's just something I wanted to try out and, you know, I'm quite enjoying it. So I look forward to continuing this little series on all the gear in my studio. And with that said, I think, uh, I think coming up next, we have the Behringer X32, if I remember. Uh, the Behringer X32 producer. So until next week, I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.